Uh, hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Fun Mathematics. Uh, today is episode, episode number 7 and we are going to talk about Tyler's polynomial. Which is a very nice tool from, from analysis, which basically, like let's say, one of the, the most difficult uh, thing for beginners in, in analysis to understand, but it's, it's very useful and very strong, strong thing. And we are going, of course, to use uh, tools we developed in the last episode, so if you haven't seen it, it's, um, it's a good idea to, to go back basically and recall what, what was what was described there, but uh, like basically we are going to uh, to use derivatives of, of the function to, to get some nice approximation of this function. Okay, so uh, so suppose that mm, I have a function, some function fx, and I don't know much about this function. Um, for example, I know I know just that the, the function is continuous. And maybe I know one nice value. Let's say f f a is is known, and that this is everything I know about the function. So can I somehow somehow approach this this unknown function? And it's kind of hard because we don't know anything about it. But what we could say, okay, we could say, okay, so we could consider. Approximation of form where we could consider some how, how to denote it. Okay, we could basically of form a constant f a. Yeah, the function is continuous. So as we know as before, the values of the function do not change too fast. So if we are very close to value a. If x is close to a, then fx should not be too different from fa. Yeah, so, so this is the basic idea, because the function is continuous. Of course, what does it mean this uh, should not be too different? It, it means uh, that we need to go very, very close with, with the value of x. Meaning it depends on the, on the, um, on the rate of change of a. Yeah, because uh, like what, what could happen, you have like your function of a, let's say this here. Now, if we are very close around, let's say that's here, then the then the value does not does not change much. But but of course uh, the, the function uh, that, that is continuous means that that like around if if you want some limited change, you need to go some uh, ver uh, to some very small neighborhood. So so this uh, this like uh, let's say like the continuity means for every epsilon there exists some delta, and how large is this delta? Like we don't know. Yeah, so it could be it could be very small. So for example, if you have some function which is behaving like this, and then if if the value is, of a is here and x is here, this this distance can be very small. This is the the epsi uh, the delta distance. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is this is the distance, but this this thing can be can be huge. So, so basically, if you want mo small change, you know you know from the definition of continuity that you need to go very 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 close. So we don't know anything about it. So this is like the best approximation we can do. We can do much better because we don't know anything about our function. But you might agree that this is not the ideal case. So we would like to get something something better. Okay. So what we could do, instead of, of taking um, f constant, we, we, will, we will know also something. We will know that the function f is differentiable. 
Ja, so wie ein Vino Derivative, let's say of Fxa around around A. Or uh, it's uh, there exists a derivative, but maybe uh, like what would we actually know that Fa is we, we know this, you know, you know that there is some derivative. So basically, what what we have done before, we said okay, so f a in the f at point a is equal to f a, and we will take that the rate of the change of the function, rate of the growth, is zero. Yeah. So so this is this is uh, something. Let me call it zero grow approximation. Not the most simple one. So now, basically what we say, okay, so the function is changing at the point A like this, like, like F prime of A. So let's, uh, the, the rate of, of grow to be, to be constant. Yeah, so we will say, okay, so let's suppose that F prime of X is equal to F A, yeah? Yeah, suppose this. So the the rate of the growth does not change. Yeah? For example, this this function here, this is not true because here the function is growing very fast and here it's decreasing and stuff like this. But we can say okay, so the, so the function, so the rate of the function is, is constant, and if it, it would be the true true, then basically we have the function at point A here, and then the function is behaving like this, like a line. So our approximation will be a line, which will be tangent to the function f. Yeah? And, uh, um, and, and the uh, growth of this line and the tangent of this line will be exactly the value of, of the derivative of fa. So we will say that our approximation, we say that f of x, um, f of x is uh, equal f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. This is the distance from from a, and like approximately this. So we will put a instead of instead of horizontal line, which was the the previous case that where we basically put horizontal line here. We are going to put better line line which is which is somehow growing but the, uh, like and the, and the tangent is given by the by the derivation yeah? so what basically we, we can now claim is that this is the best this is uh, the best linear approximation yeah meaning what, what what does this mean actually? This means that uh, suppose that you have any linear approximation around point A, and then basically the error if if you choose a different one from this one will be larger somewhere close to the close to the point A. So suppose that um, I have uh, this limit of um, x going to a yeah, of uh, my remainder, my, my error of my approximation of, uh, let, me, let me denote it r1, yeah, so, so at point x, and I, will, I would like to compare it to, to x minus a. So, um, if, if you recall uh, our uh, third lecture, which was on, on limits, then basically what does it mean? I would like to compare how fast the, this, this function change to um, uh, when, when x, x is approaching to zero. Yeah? And I would like to show that if r1 is where r1 of, of x is equal f of a, uh, basically f of x minus uh, this, this approximation here, f of a plus f prime uh, a times x minus a. So, so our approximation, this is, this is the remainder of our approximation. So if I uh, choose this, this one approximation, I will get that the error is, is zero. 
So what does it mean? That as I am approaching closer and closer to the point A, basically this this thing here, the the denominator is much larger. Yeah, so basically uh, we know that our error is smaller than linear. Yeah, so if, if there would be some some better linear approximation, then our remainder would be uh, would be larger than linear or at least linear, and then, then we would get either infinity or some constant here, and this would not be true. So this means that R one. So so if if so if if true, then R one of x, meaning error of approximation is smaller than linear and this is basically what we would like to show now uh, this is this is trivial because you just need to you just need to to plug in so what is what is r1 this is f of x minus f of a minus f of a prime times x minus a yeah this is this is how, how we defined and we divide by x minus a as x approaches to zero now using uh, arithmetic of, of uh, limits we can we can split this uh, this fraction in half so what we can do is that we can calculate this f of x minus f of a minus x minus a but this is nothing else than definition of derivation this is derivation so this is equal to to f prime of a yeah, it's x approaching to a and minus this this thing here f prime of a times x minus a over x minus a so this will this will cancel out and what we have or what we have is this thing here so we have f prime minus a minus f prime minus a and this is zero so so we have been able to prove it that our error is smaller than the linear yeah? so so if there would be some better linear approximation and then this linear approximation will, will differ will have different tangent but this but then this this thing here won't, won't be zero and so so the error will be larger Okay. Okay. So, so now uh, we have basically the best best linear approximation, and we got it in such a way that we said, okay, so f won't be constant, but the rate of the growth will be constant. So what could we also say? Okay. So let's say the rate of the growth won't be constant. We will allow some more accuracy uh, around around it. So so let's let's make it more accurate. Yeah. So so let's let's make it um, more accurate, and let's say okay. So the rate of the change won't be constant, but the rate of the change of the rate of the change will be constant. Okay. So. So basically, we will start to consider second derivative around a, and this is what this is: rate of change of change of f around a. So basically, how much is the derivative of uh, how much is the derivative growing around a? Yeah. So. So basically, basically we will do we will do exactly the same. Now suppose that, that you know that that um, you know that this this is some number. So we will say okay. So f prime of a is equal. We will approximate this thing by uh, f prime of, of x is f prime of a plus f prime prime of a times x minus a exactly as as we have done it before and nothing nothing will be nothing will be changed and now the now the question is okay so we know how how the 
how the derivative is approximated. So what does it say about the origin of function? And the thing it says about the origin of function, okay, so the so the f of x is approximately uh, first of all f of a plus yeah, because we know we know the we know the position and now we will plug there the derivative. But uh, but basically basically what will happen if, if you have like uh, if you know the derivative and you would like to go go to the function so so there so the, if we have derivative and the origin of function so one way this way we already know it's it's derivation and this way it's it's anti derivation or integration. Now yeah? and in, in this case what's what's happening if you if you integrate a polynomial so, so this is the, the unknown here is x. So this is this is the like the, the constant uh, constant monomial of the polynomial, and this is the linear monomial of the polynomial. So if you if you do integration, what what's what's happening is that uh, if you integrate x to k, you will get x to k plus one times one over k plus one. And you can you can check that you can check that uh, by by deriving this because if you derive this then this k plus one will go go down here and uh, eliminate this one over k plus one. Okay, so if we if we do derivation of this, if uh, if we do integration of this, of uh, basically f x, then then what we will get we will get that uh, there is um, there is um, f prime of a times x minus a yeah, we, will, we will do it like a polynomial around x minus a plus f prime of a over 2 times x minus a squared okay so this is this is quite good uh, we got we got much better approximation and now we can we can proceed in this way further and further if the function is differential more and more. Yeah, so uh, here already we have we have another assumption that the function has also the second derivative around point a. And if the function has has k derivative, then then you can like basic apply this this by induction, and you will get you will get Tyworth Tyworth polynomial, which which says that f of x can be approximated as f a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of x uh, of a times x minus a over 2 factorial oh, always and then, then so on and uh, to f uh, k derivative around a times x minus a uh, sh here should be square so it should be 2k over k k factorial so this this thing here and let me denote this as, as p p k of x. Yeah, and so basically we will get we will get this approximation. And what what is the claim is that this this uh, Tyworth polynomial of um, Of degree k is best approximation. So some kind of, of generalization of the of that statement about about linear linear approximation, which is exactly here that that r one x is, is the best linear approximation. So this this bull, bull thing here. Okay, so 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 this is this is the statement we would like to we would like to to show, but uh, maybe maybe let me describe the the whole thing in in a different slightly different setting. Okay, so suppose that basically you have your function which you don't know much about it. So let's say I don't know functions like even exponential science or cosines. Like basically you know. How the function is defined, or may maybe you know, but uh, you don't even have an idea how to how to calculate some value. Let's say I would like to calculate, I don't know, exponential of of, of one, even even the value, the the, the famous value e.